Hi everyone, welcome back to another four-way project and uh, this month is stand for a wig or a hat and in my case this will be for the hat and as you can see works quite well you can adjust it if you want uh, so I went for a maple pretty much everything maple apart from this lovely shelf here and uh, quite nice details on the bottom so everything is nicely turned there is no any visible marks how we turn this so uh, moldy base quite nice loom transition piece then this shelf uh, or bowl uh, for any miscellaneous stuff um, from walnut then thinner shaft and then the head itself now you'll see why i put the grooves here uh, but you'll see that in the video and everything is nicely tied together with uh, with the tenons here so it's a little bit overkill but i'm quite pleased with this and uh, now please after watching this video check out sam mike and the richard version as well uh, there will be links down below in the video description so so stay tuned and you'll see how we make this little thing just to tune you in what i've done so far so uh, this will be three pieces glued together uh, for the head piece uh, now uh, what I've done uh, is uh, just mounted this on a screw chuck, put a, a tenon here so I can grab it with the chuck. This is the outside pieces, so this will get turned uh, turned out anyway, so it doesn't matter. And uh, the hole on the inside won't be visible after. Uh, so I could grip this by the chuck and uh, flatten this top. So I have a blue face. And uh, so I have the number one and three done and uh, this is the middle one. So I've just finished this face here So it's nice and flat all the way across or flat enough So the clamps will do the rest of the job and I put a little recess here so I can uh, Flip this around Again, this is on the inside. So this recess won't be visible. So just expand the jaws and uh, now I can flatten the other inner face. So the scraper that I'll be using is this one. This is the only one which I have which is almost square across and uh, this one I used in a separate video so I'll uh, put the link down below to th that video as well. Uh, and uh, this one is almost uh, exact copy from Steve Jones. His family used a uh, scraper like this one uh, for I believe three generations or two generations. So again you can see slight curve so you cannot engage all of the profile here but works quite well I just want to see where I am in terms of flatness so the wings are pulled back a little bit so I need to bring the middle portion down So to get a little aggressive cut or scrape, I'm dropping the handle down a little bit. This is not something that you want to do with the standard scraper. And this is quite close. The only portion I'm care is the circle here, which and uh, that is flat so that will be okay so i'll just glue these uh, three pieces together and uh, we'll work on something else so just to give you a rough idea what we are going to do uh, this is the rough sketch uh, so the head is currently in the clamps so roughly 140 mil um, square uh, which will slightly taper down uh, so it will be a slightly less this diameter and a little bit of a, like a teardrop and then we're going to make a sort of a thin spindle then walnut um, sort of a shelf or a little bowl uh, for any like um, miscellaneous stuff and uh, the base here and uh, again a little spindle here so this is the the pieces like I said the, the head is currently in the clamps so this is the base this will be slightly elevated this walnut piece and this is the uh, the spindle connecting all together so uh, what we can do uh, for start is make the base and then while the 
glue is drying on the head and then we'll switch around and uh, uh, move from there so we can start with the base and uh, this is maple uh, everything is maple apart from that little shelf uh, which will be a black walnut uh, now uh, I'm going to hold this on the screw chuck and uh, this is roughly uh, six and a quarter inches um, diameter so roughly around 160 mil and uh, I can just feed this on the screw chuck and uh, so we can start and I'll increase the speed this is small piece of timber and uh, I'll throw up diameter uh, this is spindle gauge so that's nice clean diameter and uh, we can show up the base here and uh, what I need, uh, so this is the bottom so I'll need a recess to expand the jaws so I can flip it around uh, but first I want to chew this up make it nice and smooth, so shear scraper like so and roughly 100 mil that's diameter of my bigger chuck when it's fully closed square and scraper smaller one you move it back and forth so it gets nicely in so that's the recess done and it's nice and clean uh, I want slight dovetail so skew chisel and nice and gently make a little dovetail use the bevel to get this nice and clean and since I have this one in my hand so I'll put a little decoration here like this There we go, and uh, now I can do something with this portion, actually I'll just reduce the height a little bit, like this. Roll small bead. And we can do it on this side as well. a few seconds with sanding and that's pretty good you with a few taps to get the dust out of the corners yeah so that's pretty good so I can take that out and uh, flip it around so I'll expand into this a little bead like you just lightly expand the jaws you don't have to be aggressive and uh, now for the base here I'm going to make it a little bit like uh, how should I say this like profiled architecture piece like much like moldings okay so that's the top nice and flat um, or chewed up actually so I'll just use the scraper 
to make this section slightly concave like this we will drill the hole after so I'm thinking maybe roughly um, I don't know around 20 mil hole maybe a little bit bigger and uh, I need sort of a shoulder on the spindle so that will come out somewhere around there and um, maybe a little raised profile so there will be a little flat let's say here and then a raised profile here and then the rest will be much like molding so again I'll use the scraper Just to get this little shoulder get the waste out of the way uh, I have here a little bead which I think it's okay uh, but the, this inside profile I just don't like so um, I scoop it out a little bit The spindle gouge just lightly, okay. I think that will be okay. Now, with the spindle, uh, with the skill, uh, we'll make a little shoulder here. I think that will be okay. Just to clean it up, just to see if this surface is nice and clean. It should be, and yeah, it is. So, that I can move on. I'll clean that up a little bit later as well uh, so a little bigger bead here so maybe end it up around here or actually start yeah I think that should look okay just a little bit more on the inside and now I can clean up this hole gently using spindle gouge now this inside shoulder is a little bit rough so skew I reposition the camera so you can see a little bit better what's going on So I'll leave a little flat spot again here and I'll clean that shoulder with a shear scraper again spindle gouge I'll move it this and so I don't like it's quite shallow profile uh, so I think I'll uh, increase the the color here or maybe even slight OG yeah I don't like the OG here so with this so everything is cut nice and clean 
uh, which you want something especially with this sort of detail so uh, this will take just a little bit of 180 240 360 and uh, the sanding will done you don't want to sand this kind of profile too much because you lose pretty much all of the the crispness of the edge so so before I start sanding I'll just drill out this is 20 mil uh, Forstner bit I can decrease the speed that should be maybe a little bit deeper there we go let's go to the next stage here is a piece of timber that will be transitioned between the base and the shelf the, the ball part uh, so it will sit right above the base here and uh, so it will have a sort of inward flare like this cove uh, to big bead and then outward and that will support the the shelf of the ball now the 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 shelf or the ball part uh, will have uh, the tenon and a shallow tenon and on the this transition piece it will be a shallow, uh, shallow mortise and that will connect uh, the ball to the transition piece and then the spindle here the neck or, or sorry the spine of the of the piece will connect everything through so the ball through the transition piece and I even might drill it all the way through the base uh, the transition piece will be roughly 40 mil and uh, let's go with 15 mil for the uh, for the bead here so I'll just set that in so that's the end point Now I'll do the cove and the bead with a skew chisel, I'll just reposition the camera so you can see what I'm actually doing, so... And I want a little flat spot uh, here and here, so I can extend this a little bit further down. Okay, for now that that side is done. So they look the same. I'll finish up the coal uh, later. So now I can roll the bead. Do the other side. So this is 25 mil diameter a bit. So like I said, it doesn't have to be a very deep uh, mortise. And uh, this one is 15 mil drill bit, forstner bit. These calipers now are set to exact measurement of the hole on the base uh, and uh, it's just slightly smaller than 20 mil so the, the jig won't help here so there we go And I want to clean up the shoulder here using the skill. I 
undercut it slightly. And uh, so this will now just fit inside here and you can see that's really good fit and uh, so we can move to the to the ball part spindle gouge to true it up The reason I'm flipping this around uh, because of the shape of the the ball, this uh, knot here, and this split will go away. So, so now I have the tenon, and I'll uh, be, just before I uh, reverse this, I'll check if the fit is okay. Uh, now it's maybe just slightly bigger, and this mark here uh, is the maximum, or actually slightly bigger than the diameter of this, so I have a little bit of overhang. And now I can shape whatever I want from this point, let's say here on the side, maybe 40 mil, something like that. So I use a little bit of coffee ground and then thin CA glue, saturate that. Remove the excess a little bit with the shavings. Now this is a little bit synced in. So I'll just pour it one more time and then we'll add a little bit more coffee. So this way you gradually build up the layers Small spindle gouge to make the the bead. There we go. So that's ready for sanding. Now, just before that, I want to double check the fit here. Yeah, that's actually a little too close, uh, but it's okay. It will hold quite nicely. So, so I sanded the outside and uh, the, the knot here is nicely filled, you can see. So now I'll grip by this little tiny foot. Now I can remove it later if I want, but as it stands now I actually, actually quite like how it looks with the base. So now we can hollow it and uh, need to drill the hole for the uh, for the main shaft or the, the the spine of the 
of the stand. So let's go to this mark. This is all together a little bit too, too tall. Now it would be nice to make maybe a bead here, so to as a ring. Again, following Okay, so that should be okay and I can put a little decoration, something that will distinguish the, the base from the, from the ball part and just now final check on the surface. So same drill bit, 15 mil to go all, to, all the way through, nice and gently. the knot sand and uh, I'll show you the end results here is the base and uh, the shelf so so far so good you can see the knot is filled nicely so it looks like a, doesn't look all that bad on the outside it's a quite a rugged edge so it looks a little bit off but it's hard to see uh, this one is maybe a little bit more visible on the top so that's this part done so now i can focus on the head and lastly we'll do the spindle so here is the blank uh, for the head and uh, this will go this tenon into the chuck here and i'll use the tailstock and i just clip the corners on the band so before we'll make a quicker job of chewing it up and that this will be cross grain orientation so ball gouge So the blank is nice and trued up and there are a few gaps that I'm not happy about like this uh, but I'll see this is still rough shape and rough I need to reduce the diameter a little bit uh, and get the shape done um, and then I'll see if there are any gaps left we'll fill those uh, now uh, this will be the top here so it will be sort of a teardrop uh, profile a little bit like this 
Uh, so this will be the heavier part. Again, this is cross grain orientation. So this profile now is almost uh, close to a sphere or half the sphere or that's at least the goal. And uh, I want to finish all this portion, maybe up to this area here. And then we'll jam chuck this. Okay, that looks much better. And I'll stop here. You can see the gap here is quite bad. Uh, if I had the joiner, or if I maybe spend a little bit more time, get it perfectly flat, uh, then it will be much better. Uh, so all of this is now sandable, but I need to address this. So what I'll do is I'll grab a spindle gouge and I'll make a V. Groove. Oops, that's not what I want. So out of the mistake, make a decoration. What I'll do is I'll just grab a white glue, uh, push it in and then I'll use sandpaper I uh, get some uh, same color uh, dust and then fill those in so grab a 120 grit sandpaper and just sand the groove that will create sort of a dust slurry that will push it in and as you can see that's pretty well gone uh, whenever you have uh, glue uh, the the oil or the lacquer won't stick to it and it will leave a sort of a stain so I have to recut it and that might open up the, the joint again Okay, let's see how that's looking. Okay, I can live with that. And so what I've done here, uh, this is rough out bowl, uh, and I just threw it up everything, and uh, the inside I also threw up, and uh, quite nicely, convenient. This is just the right fit as the jam chuck. So. This is much like if you would jam chuck an egg. So it will grab on the a little bit below the highest uh, diameter. So now all I have to do is just adjust it a little bit. Okay, so you can see now the this is jammed in. It's actually quite true. And uh, so I'll just tighten up the chuck here. 
just in case. And uh, so now I'll just lightly, no, even before that, I'll bring the tail stock just until I remove this ring here. This will be the flange for the bead and uh, now what I'll have to do is blend this curve and do some, some sort of a detail here as well. I'll just use the bow gouge as a sheer scraper to get away from the bow here. Finesse this a little bit and now I have the smooth section here to ride the bevel. Now I am going against the grain so the finish won't be great. drill the hole I need to clean up here the remaining so just go lightly and I want to slightly undercut this be careful when you pull the drill out so you don't pull the the head out although it's quite jammed in quite quite well so So here is the head nicely sanded and you can see it looks quite good and nice curve, teardrop and the hole here. So everything now is ready. We still have to make the spindle and assemble oil and it should be done. So this is around 30 mil diameter. So I need boundaries now. So this will be the bottom and for the bottom I need um, a tenon, let me just measure it. So the tenon for the bottom will be roughly uh, 50, 55 mil. And for the top, around 23 mil. So those are my boundaries and uh, here I can make uh, the tenon. So I'll do first tenon here for the bottom using the skew. So I have a little bit of chatter, but at this stage I am not worried about it, so... Make a chamfer and I can just test the fit before I continue on. So he, this tenon here on the bottom is perfect. Just the right amount for the, for the glue. And uh, now I'll do the other one on uh, for the top and then we'll focus on the spindle. The good spot for you to see what's happening uh, with the spindle here. So what I'll do is I'll make a transition down. I want to get this thin on the, on the middle. I, obviously not as thin so it will break, but I need to get these down a little bit. Uh, but first I want to make details here. So. I'll do the same details as I did on the transition piece between the base and the bowl. 
so I need roughly 15 mil on both sides Okay, that's good. Speed is roughly um, 11 millimeters or 10 mil, doesn't have to be exact. I think that will be okay, uh, but this bead will obviously go all the way down and uh, to a thin spindle. So uh, what I have to do now is roll the bead on the on the right. Okay, that's good. So now I can focus on thinning this down and I'll start here from the tail stock end. So you can see here the outlines of small bead here and I'll use this uh, skill gouge just to roll that bead. It's much easier. And safer option let's say especially in this tight corner there we go so what I'll do now is thin this down a little bit more to the bottom of this bead and that should be the final thickness so I need to steady the spindle because if I don't steady it it will vibrate hope you can hear it and now this surface here it's um, uh, uneven let's say it has a vibration mark there we go so we are now at the bottom of the bead here Here I'm again down to the bottom of the bead and uh, I want to make another small bead underneath and again I use this small skill gouge and I had a catch and a nasty one yeah that's quite a design opportunity here so let's see what I can say 
let's see if I removed the spiral mark on the top yes almost I have almost roll the bead now to see if I remove the spiral on the side and no I didn't still have a, quite a bit so I need to roll one more time ok that feels nice and small but just to see if I remove it and no still have a little, a little bit so one light pass it's always the accidents towards the end that that ruin your work So I'll roll another bead. Okay, so that's better. And there is no more spiral mark here so okay I managed to to save it so now just to focus on this part the spindle on this side and with my palm I'll control here the skew on this side and uh, that way I should be able to get a little cleaner cut or smoother cut And the spindle is done, looking quite Just nice, focus a little bit better, there we go. So both ends look the same, uh, but this one is the bottom because of the tenon and uh, you can see everything looks quite good, nice clean details. So uh, I'll just clean this up and we can test fit. Okay, so the way this goes, I can glue up immediately pretty much uh, this um, transi transition. There we go. Uh, but just to see how it all looks together. So this goes together and now the spindle that connects everything together and the head here. And uh, voila, that looks quite good. And let me just show you. There we go. So I'm actually quite pleased with this. It's looking quite good and it's not tippy. It's actually quite stable. Uh, but obviously I need to glue everything together. So I'll do that. I'll uh, glue this uh, together and uh, uh, oil it and I'll show you the final result. And uh, here it is. Oiled and uh, ready to be used. So you can see the lovely details on the bottom. 
this base, then the transition, the shelf itself, or the bowl, the shaft, and the head. And uh, now I gotta say these um, grooves really did hide the the seam, the glue seam. So that's the good. That, that was the good call. But overall, quite good piece, and it's not all that wobbly. So uh, wig or the um, the hat will. Uh, do just fine and it won't tip over or anything like that and uh, since we are at the hat let me just uh, grab one and uh, here it is so I think it looks really really good here we go a little bit broader view so you can see it looks really really good now I don't have the wig so the hat will do so I'm quite pleased, so please don't forget uh, after watching this video um, go check out Sam, Mike and Richard's version as well there will be links down below in the video description so uh, thank you for watching uh, hopefully you'll try something similar and uh, see you in the next video